Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pauline Schuckmark, Jr., host for We Like the 1%. We Like the 1% is about individuals and entrepreneurs, and today we're going to discuss coding and other tech-related matters with Sumil Thapa from Oceanit. Good morning, Sumil. Hi, thanks for having me. Great. Now, you have an interesting background, so before we get to this little car we have in front of us and what that's uh, related to coding mm -hmm. in your co courses that you're doing at Oceanit, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, first of all. Yeah, so uh, I'm a chemical engineer at Oceanit, and I do a lot of um, science and tech R&D development of new technologies and new materials. Um, in terms of my background, I, I grew up here. My family is from Nepal, um, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a local boy. <laughs> so I grew up in town, went to school here, and then uh, now I work here in downtown at Oceanit. And how long have you been with Oceanit now? I've been with Oceanit for almost eight years now. So you must really love the company. It's yeah. a fantastic place to work, I can see. It's, it's yeah. really exciting. The, the breadth of, of topics and areas that we work in is really broad, so it's always interesting and exciting. Okay, now Oceanit has a wide range of tech-related items it covers and its repertoire, but we're going to place our focus on the coding yeah. and the passion. You're very passionate about coding and we want to teach coding to as many people in Hawaii as possible. So you have a, a strategy to do this yeah. at Oceanit. So you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, you know, with, with Oceanit, we're a technology company, but we're a technology company in Hawaii. So our, our focus, our core values center around being curious and exploring technologies, but also you know, ha doing it with a sense of ohana and then a greater sense of community and, and integrating our work with the, the greater community. And so with the coding car, um, our goal is to help bring coding and expose the students of Hawaii so that um, you know, the future technology community can really grow and prosper here. And the method that you're deploying with Oceanit is to teach teachers first, yes. so hopefully they can integrate coding into the curriculum of yeah. that particular school. So can you give us a little background of um, some of the schools that are participating in with like Kamehameha schools? Yeah, so from the, from the get-go, Kamehameha has been an essential partner for, for all of our work with this Altino coding car. And they've really been um, willing to jump into this experiment that we're doing in, in education and helping spread this coding. Um, and, and there are many people involved in the coding community in Hawaii. And so we're just one, one other um, method of trying to get that exposure out there to the students. So there are 37 schools yeah. so far that have been affected by your? Uh, yeah, your so in the past year that we've launched this Altino coding effort, we've um, taught about 73 teachers, 100 people over total. And they come from 37 different schools. And a number of those schools have started implementing um, teaching programs or lessons that involve using Altino. And typically, what is the age range that you try to cover when you go yeah. to these schools? So uh, we work uh, with teachers from elementary through high school. So we've had teachers um, using this car to work with uh, children as young as first grade all the way through high school. And uh, you have a collaboration with uh, the Koreans to yes, do this. Yes. So uh, there is a company called Altino? Uh, yes, or, the, the yeah. Seon company makes this Altino car. Okay. And so in, in the course of our normal, so our, our main business is focused on technology development. And um, we have Korean partners. And so because they were aware that our company is involved with the design thinking movement in Hawaii and educating um, people about design thinking, they thought they would be interested in, in this coding car that's being used in Korea to help them implement 100% um, implementation of coding in their curriculum, their standard curriculum in Korea. And for people who are unfamiliar with this concept of design thinking, can you give a rundown of what it is? Yeah, so design thinking is a process that uh, we've been um, trying to kind of teach in, in Hawaii for about over over eight years, like almost a decade now. And it's a process that um, helps people be creative in their design process and helps combine you know, the technical elements of designing a product with the human element. So being really focused about the emotions and the effects on, on the user and how what you're designing impacts them and using that collaboration between the designer and the user. 
Now, the way you teach the teachers is you have these four sessions. It used to be six sessions yeah. that you run on Saturdays at the headquarters at Oceanit just down the road from yeah. here. Yeah, so we, we, we do a four-day session to cover the bulk material and then two additional days to help teachers develop curriculum. And I, I followed uh, your first session that you did, and it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not technically complicated. Yeah. A lot of people are frightened about coding because they think it's something you have to have a lot of background in mathematics or be good at a particular yeah. science or something. It's really not that hard. The way you describe it, and Ian does at Ocean, it is like learning a language. Yeah, so coding is just like a language. It, uh, there's a big misconception that it's very, very intensively mathematical and only like you know a really smart genius can learn coding. but. I mean, it's, it's like any language, and it's really ultimately what it boils down to is a language that helps people communicate with computers and technology. It's actually quite logical. Yep. So it, they're just basic, uh, basic instructions you have to give the computer to tell the car, for example, to start going, yep. to, to make it stop, to turn to the right, to turn to the left. So it's just logic as opposed to harsh mathematics. Yeah, it, it's almost, I mean, you can think of it as if you're giving instructions to a five-year-old and you have to tell a five-year-old, okay, you know, you got to go here and when you get here, do this thing and you have to be very specific because the kids, you know, they need clear direction. So mm -hmm. the car is very similar to that where you can give it precise instructions step by step and it'll do exactly is, is this as simplistic with the teachers? Because I know, for example, if you're teaching uh, riding, uh, how to ride a horse to a child, they just take the instructions at face value and do as they're told. Whereas when you get older, it becomes slightly more difficult to learn a skill, whether it's learning a language, mm -hmm. or, because somehow your personality interferes. It's not a blank slate like yeah. that of a child. So do you find, or, or is coding so simplistic and logical that the teacher doesn't have this issue? Um, or is it easier to teach a child? That's what I'm trying to. I think that the children take up the material very quickly. I mm. mean, and that's that's the thing that we've noticed. We work predominantly with teachers, but we we've done workshops with children as well, and we noticed that the kids pick up on it very fast. Mm. I mean, they're blazing through the materials, and oftentimes, uh, because they grew up with technology, right? So yes. technology is second nature to them. There's a and, psychological block. Yeah, and then with teachers, you know, there's some, you know, the preconceived notions of what they can do or what mm. it should be, or, mm. and oftentimes, in their mind, it's more comp they're expecting it to be more complicated than it is, mm. and so we have to break down those barriers a little bit with the teachers and adults. Uh, but, you know, our goal is to lower the bar so that everyone can do it. And so we, we broke down the material and we teach it in a way that it's accessible to anyone. Mm -hmm. And coding is very important to learn because it's going to be, if not already, the blue collar job of the future. Yeah. Right? And, and for us, um, beyond just being a, a useful skill, is it's really a way to um, unlock critical thinking and problem solving um, abilities and really getting people to understand that mindset and helping them become critical thinkers and, and problem solvers. Okay, now let's focus on the little car we have in front yeah. of us. So uh, the collaboration we mentioned uh, is between Oceanit and Altino yep. for this design thinking to get the coders to understand something. As yeah. it, it seems abstract if you're just dealing with instructions like algebra, but if yeah. you put it to use and try to make a car run, it all makes more sense. Yeah. So how did the collaboration between Altino and Oceanit come about? Did the Koreans approach you or did you approach them or was there a personal connection? Um, so through um, some of our technology partners, they connected us and when we saw the, the car, we thought, oh wow, this is a really interesting technology that really makes it a lot easier to learn what coding is. And so um, in talking with them, we did a, a dry run where we invited a bunch of uh, community stakeholders, teachers, and students, and we just you know, tested it out, brought the car, talked about it, helped them do a little one day, one and a half day workshop to see if people would get excited and if they would understand what was going on. And you know, people really got into it. They were super excited. So we, we thought, okay, maybe we have something here. And, and from there, we, you know, kind of took the curriculum that the Koreans have developed um, for teaching teachers and students and adapted their curriculum and modified it so that um, we could teach it here here in Hawaii. And it's, it's, it's been going on for 
about a year now. That's yeah. wonderful. So the underlying software that is being used to make the car run, the Altino car run, is called Arduino. Yes. And this is not Korean. It's no. uh, open. This is this yeah. is an open source community. So <laughs> one of the nice things that we like about this car is it's not just a, you know a proprietary software. It's running on our an Arduino platform, which is an open source open source community, and it's. You know, there's a greater community. So in learning the car, and we, we teach it um, in C language, mm -hmm. but once you learn the basics of Arduino, not only can you program the car and you know, drive the car around, but now you can access the Arduino open source community. And they have a whole list of projects and tutorials. And, and they're very much a makerspace community where they experiment making electronic devices. And so once you have that basic understanding, it opens the door for people to explore that whole community and world. So the, the Koreans are fairly advanced in this. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I had a show where we were discussing Japanese, Korean, and Chinese business culture. Mm -hmm. And the Koreans are kind of characterized as very emotional people, the poets of East Asia. But they're also very advanced in technology. So while we're here in Hawaii trying to make the car just go and stop, they're already having race racing competitions with these cars yeah. among the very uh, small children, yeah. right? Yeah, so they have annual competitions with middle school and, and even elementary students. And are we trying to get to that level eventually in the between the schools in Hawaii? Yeah, so actually last year, um, because of our, our collaboration, they invited um, two, two students from Hawaii to participate in their annual competition. So they've been doing this competition for six or seven years now. And so this is the first time that they invited uh, any students from, from the US. Mm -hmm. And so we sent two of our, our student instructors to participate in the, in the competition. In oh, so the Hawaiians were the first to, to yeah, be okay. From, from the good. US, yeah. And, and so, I mean, it was really exciting. And we've actually, this past January, invited a group of, of middle school. And I mean, they, these were sixth and seventh and eighth graders um, from Korea. And they actually did workshops. So you can imagine having middle school students doing a workshop teaching adults how to use the car and use the advanced features of this car. Do you have some collaborative effort where the teachers from here also compete with the teachers in Korea? Or not, you don't not quite that? yet. <laughs> so, so the Koreans are kind of a step ahead of us in that they've made it mandatory this year that all students get exposure mm. to coding as part of their standard curriculum from first grade through 12th grade. So they're, they're a little bit ahead of us in terms of implementing you know, the curriculum and having the teachers prepared and, and teaching coding material. Um, and so we're, we're kind of get to the point where Hawaii, we want Hawaii's teachers to, to be there. And you know, we're trying to push to make Hawaii the leader in, in this area. Yeah, that's brilliant. Now, Altino, besides the car, do they have any other gadgets that helps with the design thinking in terms of coding? Uh, any other physical gadget besides the car concept? Or is the car the, the best example or the one that children yeah. have the most fun with? So, so the, the car is the, the concept that they have most developed. Mm -hmm. and, and around the car, they have different platforms in terms of doing competitions and different learning tools. and then. Um, the Altino is, is one line of products, and Seon, the company that, that designed the Altino car, they actually are working on different products. Um, di and, and their focus is really developing tools that help teach um, coding concepts and languages and curriculum. I would imagine something like a, a dog or an animal might be entertaining yeah, for a like, child. Like a, yeah, like a walking robot or something yeah, like that. Yeah, a, a humanoid or something like that. Yeah. So I, I, I believe that they have other, uh, other tools. It's just the car is really nice because it's very familiar to people mm -hmm. and it's easy to explain the concept of you know driving forward, turning left or right, sure. and turning on the lights. So I think that's just to the, explain the logic. Yeah. To, okay. Okay. Wonderful, Sumil. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion uh, with the car and uh, coding and other things that Oceanit delves into when we take after we come back from this quick break. Thank you very much. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week 
here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're speaking with Sumil Thapa from Oceanit, and we're discussing coding and other tech-related matters at Oceanit. So uh, I noticed on the Oceanit website, Sumil, that people can take tours of the headquarters at Oceanit. Uh, yeah. So people can just go on the website and sign up for a tour. You, I think you give them quarterly. Yeah, so we have quarterly tours of our facility. And I'm just a part of, part of what we want to do in, at Ocean is foster a tech community here in Hawaii. So we very much want people from the community and the public, and we even have students come, come through, and where we share the kind of work we do, what, what facilities we have, and the tools that we have. Because a lot of people don't realize that this kind of work happens here in Hawaii and yes. happens even <laughs> right off Port Street Mall in downtown. Yes, believe it or not, because most people, especially visitors who, who come upon Fort Street Mall, uh, it says Central Business District in the bus stop, but it actually looks like a perpetual filming of Night of the Living Dead. But um, there are a lot of tech companies based yeah. in downtown here. So you've got Blue Planet with Hank and in Harbor Court, and you've got Oceanit. So these are the famous, well-known ones, uh, but these are trying to foster the next generation yeah. in coding and other tech. So uh, we've got the public tours at Oceanit, and you've also got these coding courses, and mm -hmm. they're limited at this moment to the teachers. So yeah. are you looking to expand in terms of this, the, your core values of curiosity, ohana, and community? Are you looking to expand in offering those courses at the headquarters to the public in general, or? Yeah, so uh, for us, we're kind of because this isn't our primary interest, we're yes. kind of bandwidth limited. Yes. Um, we try to invite as many people as we can. And we, so we have courses that are strictly for the teachers to help them with professional development. So those courses are kind of directly at teachers. But then we also do occasionally do um, kind of more public courses that we will advertise publicly. And like in the design thinking. Yeah, you have design, we have design thinking workshops. We'll do workshops. And, and this is part, uh, we'll do it at our office and then with uh, Kamehameha Schools, we actually partner with them and use some of their facilities and teach at their uh, Halawi Nana facilities. And are your, are your partnerships always between uh, teachers and pupils, that kind of link, or do you go to other professional places? We, we'll do, we've worked with uh, not just teachers, but also business professionals, community members. And, and so you know, our focus is the teachers, because we think that we can maximize our reach by teaching teachers who you know, touch so many students, um, but you know we're we're not we don't want to limit you know nim limit the knowledge. So we're open to teaching community members as well. Okay, so for any teachers that are watching the show who have not participated in one of your coding uh, classes, the car is the mechanism by which you will learn the coding. And before we leave this topic of the coding with Oceanit, can you point to the audience what are the aspects of the car that they'll learn in in terms of yeah. making it move? and the other operation, because it looks quite complex, but it yeah. is actually quite simple. Yeah, so the car kind of drives like a basic car. Um, you know, it can go forward, make left and right turns, go backwards. It has headlights, kind of like a car. You would, you know, your blinker, your signal lights, um, brake lights. And then it also has a buzzer, so you can actually play music with the car. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a piano keyboard, mm -hmm. you can play a whole bunch of notes. There's kind of this dot matrix in the front that's scrolling text. Mm -hmm. So you can display text, you can, you know, draw logos, so you can display all, all sorts of things. I think people were having the most fun with the, the dot matrix yeah. because you were instructing people people to make a heart yeah. shape or something. You can have a, a lot of face. fun and be yeah. creative with it. And that's that's the other thing that we're trying to you know, let people know is coding isn't necessarily dry logic and math. Mm. It it can be a very creative endeavor and you know, a lot of you know, the creative media that people see today, a lot of it re relies on coding and technology to develop. Yeah. It is creative, but you can't cut corners in coding. There's no, no you have to be very precise yeah. and you have to give the commands in the instruction list very carefully. You do one thing wrong and the car won't move. Yeah. So it's for a particular personality, yeah. I think. 
<laughs> so that, that's good. And for, and for children, it's great because they're a blank slate. They don't yeah. have judgments or things like that. So they just learn as they're told. So let's move away from the car a mm -hmm. little bit. And uh, there was this agricultural technology symposium that took place yeah. in January. And Ocean, it participated in the Ag Tech. Yeah. So uh, you were in the paper for that. So do you want to explain? Um, Oh, your involvement. Yeah, so um, uh, HTDC and the Department of Agriculture sponsored a uh, agathon, they call it, so yes. Agriculture Technology Hackathon. And so there's a, a handful of us from the Ocean Office who put together a team, and we developed um, what we call the Harvest Vision. And so this was kind of idea born out of you know working with um, these chips that are you know take. AI technology and put it on, on the chip level, so a hardware AI device. And we integrated with a, a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. And we used it to kind of help um, a, a one of our partners at Kauai Coffee mm -hmm. develop a system that could determine if coffee beans were ripe or unripe based on a, a visual image. So over the course of, of a week, we during this hackathon, we put together this this device and we demonstrated that you could use this device on their mechanical harvesters to help give feedback to the drivers as well as the supervisors managing the field to determine whether their field was at the peak har um, harvest ripeness or if they needed to make adjustments to how they're harvesting. And by doing that, could increase their yields and decrease the amount of waste crop. That's very interesting because when we attended the East-West Center conference in collaboration with um, uh, Hank, uh, Rogers mm -hmm. at Blue Planet, uh, they were discussing there's a sort of a invention, like it's like a coin star mm -hmm. for coffee beans mm -hmm. because the coffee beans are graded according to ABC or whatever. Yeah. And there's a, you, you just put all the beans in this machine like you do to yeah. sort out pennies or whatever. And it, 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 divide, it uh, categorizes yeah. the beans. So the, people think agriculture and farming and things like that are boring, but there's an awful lot of technology yeah. uh, that's being developed in these areas. Yeah, so and, and, and that's the thing. And that was one of the missions of that ag agathon was to really pair agriculture with technology and bring awareness to the fact that, you know, in order to sustain the agriculture needs that we have, it does take a lot of innovative technology and innovative thinking. And, and so, you know, through our efforts, we want to, you know, find as many partnerships and kind of help our local agriculture community and give give them tools and resources that can help them foster and really grow. I was unable to attend the Agathon, uh, but were there a lot of students there? Were, or is it more professional level? It, it's, uh, it's a good mix. So the, for hackathons, you know, you have everything from students to, you know, professionals to hobbyists. And, and so it's a, it's a great mix of people. And I think one of the other great things is you get to see that community aspect and see who else is out there in the tech community yeah. in Hawaii. And were there legislators there as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's so. always a legislator <laughs> around, hanging about, like at the cannabis uh, expo they had. So there's always somebody. Well, person. yeah, and, and it's good to see the the support of local government. And because you know the Department of Ag was hosting it, you know, um, part of their mission is to you know foster that community and bring technology in that partnership. And I think for Hawaii as a state and for our economic development and growth, it's really important that we, you know, foster as many cross industry collaborations to really grow the economy in as many ways as possible. And Ocean, it is in a, a prime capacity to do that because you have such a wide range yeah, of activities. Yeah. So one of the things that struck me as a little bit unusual for a tech company such as yourself uh, is that you've included fashion technology. Yeah. Because everybody associates Pat and Ocean it with, you know, ocean harness and something to do with the uh, environment and energy, things mm -hmm. of that nature, now coding. But you've also got this fashion technology angle that is relatively new? Is that yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, part of our, 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 our core values of curiosity is, you know, we don't limit, you know, ourselves to a specific field. And so um, we're always looking for new partnerships and new areas. And one of the things that came up was, you know, we talking through to some folks in the fashion industry, you know, they're looking for new dyes and new trends. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of work with quantum dots as, as a fluorescent coloring material. And um, for various, you know, tech-related um, technologies, and we thought, oh, well, you know, maybe we can apply that that material to to hair and create a new like high fluorescence hair dye. And so we've been exploring, and you know, we did a little test with some hair, and it 
you know, we've gotten some pretty astounding, you know, results where you can get hair to basically just glow fluorescent colors. Is this for the millennial market that you're looking to? Sell? Yeah, so our, our idea is, <laughs> you know. The most successful YouTubers have tapped into that female teenage market. So they're the ones who are with the seven, 17 yeah. million subscribers like Jenna Marbles. So uh, she dyes her hair regularly. It's quite entertaining. Yeah. So is that the market that you're looking yeah, into? I mean, we're, we're, we're exploring our options. And um, you know, one of the ideas is that you could have these these quantum dots, you know, in, under normal lighting conditions, look totally normal, and then when you put them under a black light, they can glow like outrageous colors. And right. so the the idea would be maybe you could have a dye that looks normal on you know in your day to day activity, and then you can let loose in the evening, go to a party under a black light, and you're all glow glowing, you know. So does this have a potential to extend into makeup and things? <laughs> Like Quite the Japanese I mean, girls, the Gonkuro girls. Yeah, so I mean, we're you know, our we we're willing to explore all the possibilities. So we're, you know, we've kind of did a kind of a demonstration proof of concept, and now we're we're talking with different folks in the fashion industry, that you know, hair design, and seeing where can we take this technology. And we're, that's that's our mindset of always exploring new possibilities for things that we've worked with or things that we're developing. Okay, so that's one of the more unusual as aspects that you cover in the range of work you do at Oceanit. Any other more artistic ones that are coming up that merge art or color with technology? Um. I think you know the other thing that we try to do is incorporate other areas. So through working with like fashion designers and and stuff, um, we've tried to bring that element, and this goes in, in along with design thinking. Try to bring that element into designing our technology. So we have projects that involve like uh, a cooling garment, mm -hmm. and for that, you know, we've talked to. Is that different... like a wearable? Or... Yeah, it's yes, a it's yeah. a wearable. So it's like a vest that you can help cool your body with. It circulates a cooling fluid. Yes, there's and the opposite problem in cooler climate where they have a body warmer. Yeah. It's a technology that warms it so you don't have to wear a coat. Yeah. So, so traditionally, the, you know, you think, okay, you have an engineer that's designing this mm -hmm. and for maximum heat transfer and all of that. But what gets lost a lot of times in technology development is the human element. How wearable is it? How comfortable? Mm -hmm. Does it look good? And so our approach is, OK, we can handle the technology aspects, but we work with different clothing designers. And how can we design something that looks good, feels good, is wearable, and also achieves the technical goals that we want to meet? OK, so wearables is something that you're going to delve further into, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting, very interesting field. But maybe not the contact lenses yet, the contact lenses that not, have all not, your data on Not quite there yet. <laughs> That's a little bit too sophisticated and science fiction-y, but maybe you'll get there eventually. Yeah. So uh, Sumil, if any if anybody wants a tour of Oceanit, uh, you recommend that they just visit Oceanit.com yep. and look for the dates on the website and book a tour. Yep. And is there a limit to the size if people um, want to bring a school or something like that? So, so normally we have our quarterly tours that are open to the public. So if you go onto our website, you can log in and, and sign up. And then also we, we do occasionally get requests for group tours. And, and so again, on our website, you can you can submit a request. Uh, I, I believe there's a contact form, and so you can okay. you know very easy, very straightforward. Put, put in information yeah. about the group and and when you would like to, and you know we'll we'll get get in touch with people. Okay, wonderful, Sumil. Thank you so much for joining me yeah, this thank morning. Thank you for having me. And everybody, please do try to take a tour of Ocean. It's a fascinating company. Very very um, uh, very good core values. I think you focus on in terms of the Curiosity Ohana and community. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 11 a.m. for We Like the One Percent. Aloha.